Hey everybody, welcome to Odd Pod. I'm Murray, and what are you doing? I'm doing the intro for the show. That's my job. Hey, you snooze, you lose. Yeah, well, we try waking you. Well, I'm here now, so I'll do it, okay? Fine. I can go for a nap until my part of the show. Okay, well, I'll start the show. Welcome to our pod. Everybody, welcome to Odd Pod. Hope you're excited to feed that nostalgia book. It's going to be a great show today. Let's get started. Right, so today's toy review is going to be about the Highway Haunter. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, let's look at the Highway Haunter. Okay, so here's the box for the Highway Haunter. It's made by Kenner and it's part of the Haunted Vehicles range. They also did a Haunted People range, if you remember they, they had like the um, Nanny Gross and the Policeman that turned like, his, I think his face comes off, so there's a skeleton and you got the Trash Man that turns into um, like a big bug. Uh, these are the Haunted Vehicles, or one of them. And yeah, it looks like a big locust type thing, so let's open this up and see what's inside. Okay, so here it is. This is the Highway Haunter. A uh, very cool car. Prop, you know, really works. Now, fin steering wheel, back and forth. It's got the. I don't know why they bother putting out the Ghostbusters logo because it's not really a Ghostbusters vehicle, is it? It's a haunted vehicle, but still, it's cool. And yeah, it's got the stickers on the front. And it says "I Break Highway for Ghosts." And the back, um, what does it say there? "I Break Haunter for Ghosts." So um, "I Break for Ghosts" basically it says. Uh, but yeah, Highway Haunter, and yeah, the lights look really good actually. Yeah, the stickers, they'll probably look better on the camera actually, the peeling bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's really cool. And in the, the boot there should be a, oh, well there should be a motor ghost. Oh. Wait a minute. Oi! Give it. Mm. Come on, give it. Mm. Ah, ah, mm. Ah, it's mine. G just give it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is the motor ghost. If we can get them focused, there we go. And yeah, like I said, it's a motor, but a ghost. And it's very cool, I really like that. And it's just a nice addition, just something like, you know, you've got the vehicle already, but you know, just to add a little extra, you get a little ghost of it. So the ghost goes in the boot. So let's start up the engine. And probably the thing you've been looking for now is to see it transform. So here we go. Right. Buttons at the back of the seats. You press the buttons and it should transform instantly. But it is old, don't forget, so it might not work. But here we go. Oh, nearly. Ah, there we go. I took two little bits, but yeah, now it's fully transformed into, I think it's like a locust, and the ghost pops out when you press it as well. But um, yeah, so I'll show it up a bit more. So I love its face though, it's got a brilliant face. 
But yeah, and that's inside of its body, it's all like, yeah, it's like a big robot bug kind of thing. And it chases you down the road and scares people. And yeah, then all you have to do is transform it back and the wheels are there, so you just pop them back. And then you've got your highway horner again. I'm gonna press it again. And then you just, ah, there we go. Yeah, he is old. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool. I love this toy. I used to play with this loads. So, great, great, great toy. And I'm really glad I've got one with the box as well. I've actually got two of these as well. I've got one without the box and one with the box. But yeah, absolutely beautiful toy. I'll show it a bit more closely. And I'll show you the underneath. So that's what it looks like when it's not uh, transformed. And I just think it's a great idea. Um, I can't remember what the other haunted vehicles were. I know the other one's air sickness, but there's a third one. It might be the Octo 3, but I'm not sure. Um, comment if you know. But I'll do it one more time. There we go, we did it full time then. <laughs> we just got to get used to it again. And yeah, so that is the Highway Haunter. And actually, in one of the comics, I cannot remember what comic it is actually. I'm going to have to check my notes here. But in the Ghostbuster comic, I think it's issue 2, page 9, in the opposite lane, you can actually see the Highway Haunter uh, driving around. So I don't know why I'm telling you that, but it's a cool little uh, <laughs> extra bit. But yeah, there we go, the Highway Haunter. Did you have this as a kid? If you did, let me know. And there's the little, his little mate. The little motor guy. So there we go, the Highway Haunter. Absolutely brilliant. Right, it's game review time now, and in this game review I'm reviewing Toe Jam and Earl for the Sega Mega Drive, or if you're American, the Sega Genesis. But yeah, good old Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, I love Toe Jam and Earl. My favourite one is Panic on Funkatron, but I don't have that. I really want it, but it's not really hard to get out of, but it's quite expensive. But yeah, the original Toe Jam and Earl is a funky, cool game, and I do, did play this as a kid quite a bit. And yeah, really like it. It was released in 1991, and Toe Jam came kind of like a, um, like kind of like mascots for Sega. You know, with Sonic, they weren't the most popular ones, but they did come, you know, semi mascotty. And yeah, two other sequels after this: this Panic on Funkatron, and I can't remember the first because it was terrible, and it was for the Xbox, and it wasn't good. It was 3D, and yeah. But yeah, it's about two rapid aliens who crash land on Earth, and the basic thing is they have to go around picking up parts of the ship. And the soundtrack is beautiful. Let's play it. This is Toe Jam and Earl for the Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis, and I love Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, like I said, I do prefer the um, the sequel, but still, this is a really cool game, and the music just listen to that music. So funky! I absolutely love the music. It's great. Um, it's it's got an, a simple uh, you know gameplay kind of thing. You just got to find parts of your ship, kind of like um. Pikmin kind of thing, you know, you just go around finding bits of your ship and you pick up gifts and the gifts have different things inside them, like, like a catapult and things like that and, oh, I just love it. Um, the little red thin guy is Toe Jam and the big guy is Earl and yeah, um, the basic the, ga the game's kind of like a, um, a comic satire in a way it's sort of like um, what's the word um, sort of going over the top a bit with um, like it uses um the glasses and stuff like that, and just like the um, the fashion, that was it, the fashion of the, um, the 90s basically, but it's doing an over the top version of how people were in the 90s, and it might not come across when you're a kid, but it comes across a bit more when you're um, when you're a bit older, 
And yeah, it's a really fun game, so let's get playing it. So it's one or two plays as well, and I'm going to play as Toe Jam. Play a new game. So here we go, this is Toe Jam and Earl for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Uh, like I said, it was released in 1991. Uh, I do prefer the sequel, but this is still a really cool game. Uh, it's kind of a top-down perspective, uh, perspective thing, and it's, it's really cool. It's kind of like a dungeon crawl kind of thing, I guess, if you, you, know, if you want to call it that. Uh, basically, you just got to go around looking for the parts of your ship, and you take elevators to take to different levels. It's, this is supposed to be based on Earth as well, so we're looking Earth, but uh, yeah, you go to different levels, you get the elevator with two different levels, and it's, the biggest thing about this game is the music. I mean, listen to this now. Now, come on, come on. Here we go. That is beautiful music. <laughs> it's so funky. I love it. So it gives you a hint when you start the level, saying if there was a ship piece there or not. So somewhere in this level, there is a ship piece. So you can go around opening um, different presents as well, and they do different things. And they can unlock like catapults and all sorts of different um, things. And there's earthlings in the game as well, because like I said, it's on earth. So there's like phantom ice cream trucks, um, aggressive packs of nerds, giant hamsters, boogeyman. I remember the boogeyman from um, number two. Um, man eating mailboxes, police chickens, um, even some earthlings actually um, age you as well, which is cool. And yeah, it's just a crazy, weird, mad game. It's really surreal. It's strange. But um, the power-ups, yeah, like I said, they're in um, Presence. And Presence are in the second game as well, but I don't think they really have power-ups as such. So you just got to collect them. And yeah, you can just sort of, like, you can go faster or you can, um, I think some have wings so you can fly as well. And yeah, it's such a good game. It's really, really fun. Uh, it's got good reception as well when it was released, but um, it was one of those games that was popular, but it didn't, you know, have much press, you know, surrounding it. So it's sort of like, sort of like a, um, I'm trying to think of the word that they call it. It's like a sleeper hit. I think that's what the um, the phrase for it is. So it was really popular, but it wasn't at the same time. If you know what I mean. And yeah, it's like I said, it's the music that makes it. Oh, well, and there you go, swimming as well, so you can uh, check your map, you can swim to different islands to get different things. And, like I said, the whole point of the game is you find your ship parts, and when you've found the ship parts, you've beaten the game. It's as simple as that. Well, it's not as simple as that, is it? It's not the hardest game in the world, but, you know, it's a bit tricky. And it's... It's just a lot of fun, so if you can get a hold of this game, I recommend you get it. Oh, and if you do fall down like I just did then, you fall to a lower island, and if you want to get back up, you need the elevator to get back up. And, yeah, you can do all sorts. There's some humans are good, some are bad, and it's just lots. It's not, not much more I can say other than it's a funky game, and definitely check it out and have fun with it. Uh, I'm not going to complete it because I never have completed it. <laughs> it's not even that hard, I just, I've never have. But um, the only reason is because I recently bought it and I haven't actually played it properly until like um, recently. Because I last played it when I was a little kid. So it was quite nice and nostalgic for me to um, get back into as well. But um, it's a great game, it's a strange game. And I think the biggest thing for me of the game is definitely the music. It's the funkiest music in the world. I just, I love it so much. Uh, I actually have the soundtrack for the second game on my iPod. <laughs> I think it's that funky. So, um, yeah, I'll let you enjoy a few more seconds of um, the gameplay footage. And that is the review for Toe Jam and Earl. And, you know, like I always do, I don't review them properly. I just want you to see them and remember them and, you know, have a great um, memory of the great game, Toe Jam and Earl. So, check this out. Right, now it's time for Oddelicious, and on this Oddelicious I'm talking about Kinder Eggs. I loved Kinder Eggs as a kid so much, they were a nice little treat, uh, you get a bit of chocolate and a little toy, and it was great, lovely having Kinder Eggs as a kid. And yeah, so this is a new Kinder Egg, and we're going to see what they're like today. 
Uh, I had one not long ago and I wasn't impressed. <laughs> in the 90s, I was really looking forward to my Kinder Eggs when I got them because there was those terrapins. Uh, I, think, I can't remember what they were called, but they were like nice little hand-painted terrapins and they had the crocodiles and they were really good toys, nice little collectibles and yeah, really great. Um, Kinder Egg toys back then. A few duds, you know, you're going to get that, but you know, quite a nice thing. So we're going to see what Kinder Eggs are like nowadays. I've never had a Kinder Egg. Um, I think they started off in Germany, Kinder Eggs. I'm not 100% sure. But you can't get them in America. Apparently they're banned in America through choking hazards because the toys are really small. I think that's what the reason is, because little kids choking on them or something. Because, you know, it is chocolate with a toy inside. Maybe, I don't know, kids just swallow the things whole. <laughs> I ain't got a clue. But, yeah, there's been some controversy around Kinder Eggs. But, yeah, so I'm going to open mine up now. And even the foil's quite different as it used, than it used to be. So, if you haven't had one, there you go, took the foil off, and it is basically a chocolate egg, like a little Easter egg. And you put a bit of pressure on it, hopefully it works. There you go. And it comes in half, and inside you've got your little toy, which I will get to soon. And inside is white chocolate, outside is milk chocolate. And I'm going to test it, I had it for a bit, so... Mmm. So nice. That's the thing. You always think it's going to be like cheap chocolate when it comes to Kinder Egg, but you know, any kind of like little chocolate with a toy, usually cheap, nasty chocolate or cheap, nasty like sweets. But Kinder Chocolate is beautiful. It's so nice. I'm going to have a little bit more. Mmm. I love Kinder Chocolate so much. It's really, really nice. Okay, so then there's a little toy inside, and I'm actually going to save the toy for the end of the episode for temporary blindness, blind bags, and the Kinder toy. So find out what it's like at the end. Can you hear that? Something rattling. I might have to build something. I'll have to see. Even the um, actual capsule is quite different. It used to just be like a little cup. And you just pop it in half. This one's got a little bit on it, so when you open it, it stays all connected. And I'm going to have a little bit more Kinder Chocolate. It's too nice. Get yourself a Kinder Egg just for the chocolate. It's so nice. <laughs> okay, so that was quick, but... Obviously the odd delicious isn't over, because in temporary blindness I'm going to be opening up the Kinder Egg toy. So that was odd delicious. Uh, yeah, if you had Kinder Eggs as well, just comment below and tell me your favourite toy and your worst toy that you ever got. Okay? Oh, so nice. <laughs> Murray, wake up! Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, right, now it's time for Murray's mail. Take it away, Murray. How come he gets a part of the show? Because he pays rent. <laughs> okay, I got a message from Party127. Hi, Murray. What do you and the others get up to when Dan isn't around? Oh, you don't want to know. Ladies, parties, everything. Ha ha ha. Okay. Daniel Cordell says, Murray, I would love to see you play that rubbish game Rise of the Robots and try to stay awake. Are you up for the challenge, Murray? I have no idea what that game is. If you send it me, I'll play it. Um, and if not, I won't. I have no idea what it is. Is it for a console? Is it online? I don't know. Rise of the Robots. Sounds fun. Uh, I am a robot. Uh, bad impression. Okay, and that is Murray's mail. Thank you. Okay, time for future nostalgia now. And on this future nostalgia, I am talking about... Little Big Planet. Yeah, I think Little Big Planet's going to be a nostalgic thing for people in the future, and probably for me as well. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be remembered, you know, as fondly as maybe Sonic and Mario, you know, are now from you know the old consoles. But still, he's kind of a mascot for Sony now, and. You know, the game is popular, <laughs> Little Big Planet games, and his to toys and all bits and bobs. It's not huge, but I think it definitely will be something uh, remembered in the future. They, they might still keep on making games for ages, I don't know, but 
Uh, yeah, Sackboy's cute, that's a good thing about him, he's a little cute little character and I think they've done really well designing him, he's simple as well, it's very simple looking, and yeah, that's basically it, it was just a little, because these future nostalgias aren't going to, you know, they're not really big reviews, they're just things I think are going to be nostalgic for people born around 99, 2000 to now. So yeah, that's that, that's, yeah, future nostalgias are very quick, because they're just little bits that I just, you know, I just want to shout out something that's popular now because I think it might be popular in the future. And yeah, Little Big Planet, I'm pretty sure is going to be one of them. Right, time to end the show like I end every show with temporary blindness, and that is a blind bag opening part. And before I open the blind bags though, we're going to have to look inside the Kinder Egg toy. So let's see what we got. If I can open it. Ah, okay. Very simple, I thought, I thought I'd have to build something, but no. Got a car. There you go. If I can get that in focus. You're not going to focus, are you? No, I don't think so. Ah, there you go, we can kind of focus now. Yeah, there's a little car. And actually, I'm quite impressed with that. <laughs> it's not bad. I actually purposely um, got it to show that toys aren't that good anymore, but yeah, there's a big picture of it there. Yeah, I personally got it because I wanted to show that the toys aren't as good as they used to be. And I end up getting that. See if I can get it back in focus again. Yeah. So I'm quite impressed. It's not amazing, obviously, but it's better than some stuff you get in them. I'm quite impressed with that. It's a nice little car. <laughs> yeah, so that showed me. <laughs> So yeah, they were good back then, and some of them are still good now, so get your Kinder Eggs. Ugh, I am disappointed that it's not rubbish, because the last one I got was rubbish. But that's generally quite nice, the wheels move and everything. Okay, one to Kinder Egg then. Right, so let's do the blind bags. I have two blind bags, and they're both the same type of thing. I got these from um, Home Bargains, 49p, and they are Morbs. Yeah, mobs. I I don't know what a mob is, but that's what this is apparently. Mobs. So apparently you can change them, and it says on the front, transform, shoot, crash. So it sounds fun. Collect them all as well. Lots of different original mob characters. So let's find out what mobs are then. Okay, let's open the first one. No, I don't even know what I'm expecting here. Oh, it's a weird little... Okay. And it comes with a... A thing that says Morbs. Okay, and oh, it's got um, Series 2 apparently. And there's Warriors and Monsters. And there's different types, if it's... You can see that there. So I have a monster. And it's that. I don't know if you're going to get in focus, but yeah, it's it's quite cool. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I, apparently it changes, but I like the face up to now, so I'm quite impressed up to now. So let's see. Do you? Oh, you. Ah! <gasps> wow! I'm actually really impressed. Okay, right. I'll um I'll put that back. Okay, fair. <laughs> I'm really impressed with it. All right. So there's the face. There's the mob, and you open the bottom, and little legs pop out. And then you've got your little character. That's dead good. And then you open it again. And then they go back in. And you close it. And you've got a little ball. I think you roll it and bash it into things. And like I said again. Open that up. Boop. And you've got your little figurine. You can stand up. Proper impressed with that. Okay. I really like that. That's really funky. Okay. I'm really excited. I'm going to open the other one now. So I've got another one. Hope it's not a double. Let's see. What have we got? Got another monster. Ah, oh, ace. Okay, and we've got a zombie. Let's see if we can get you in focus. Come on, come on, come on. You're not going to do it, are you? Okay. Ah, there we go. So, yeah, that's a cool rrr, brain hanging out monster. And if I do this, his little arms and legs come out. Love that. That's so well good. Okay, so, really impressed with these. These are really cool. 
So yeah, like I said, I don't know where you can get them from, but I got them from Home Bargains. Uh, 49 peach, these were, and I'm definitely, I hope they've still got them in stock, because I'm definitely getting more of these. These are ace! So yeah, there's two mobs. I really hope I open some more in the future, because I really, really like these. Yeah, okay, and that is temporary blindness for this episode, and it was a really good one. Go and get some mobs. Arr. Right, that's the end of the show. I really hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for supporting OddPod by watching it. Uh, if you do really like it, then if you haven't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. Um, I'll give links at the end for Facebook and Twitter and stuff, but one thing I do need to mention is... I have a new website. Uh, if you knew my old one, it was turnyouweird.com. That's dead. I yeah, I took it in the back garden and shot it in the back of the head. It's gone. And there is a new website now, which is just for Odd Pod. So if you're into your nostalgia and things like that, I'll be doing like proper toy reviews, TV programs I watched as a kid, game reviews, all bits and bobs. There'll be loads of articles and stuff about toys that are released now and stuff. So there'll be all sorts of things on there. There's a chat room. There's forum. There's everything. You can listen to the podcast in there, you can watch these episodes on there, so please check it out. And the link is below. It is oddpodretro.com. So please check it out. I'd really appreciate you joining um, Oddpod. Okay, now it's time for my part of the show. No, that's not happening. <sighs> oh, I've got to end it, okay? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the show, um, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Bye. If you want to keep in touch with OddPod, check out facebook.com slash oddpodshow and twitter.com slash oddpodretro. I'd really appreciate you following me on both of those. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want more nostalgic greatness, check out oddpodretro.com, which is the official website of OddPod. There's chat rooms, forums. You can watch the show now. You can send messages to Murray. You can... Do anything on there, it's great and it's got loads of nostalgic greatness, so please check it out, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.